Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, I'm Tio Detrev. I'm the CEO of Mandoro Capital. And I've got a, a, a pretty thorough presentation, but I'm not going to go through all of it because it is on the website, and I'm sure that everyone can go on the website and take a look. But I'm going to focus on a few slides. And this one is um, a good macro slide of the company. Now, there's been a lot of very good speakers this morning, and, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more, and they've made some very good points, and I'm going to reiterate some of those. And I'm going to start with the overall kind of macro view of Mandoro. And some of you may know the company because we have been public for 10 years, and despite of that, uh, we still have just under 42 million shares outstanding, which is key. And I think one of those points that were brought up earlier, that dilution is, is an issue for exploration companies who really do have to go out and finance as their main means of, of sourcing capital. And we've been very fortunate as a company over the last 10 years to have one significant discovery, which was the initial deposit, the Mallin Gold Project, which uh, was in a very challenging jurisdiction. And as one of the prior speakers said, you do need to know when to let go of an asset. And because of the political headwinds in China, we decided to uh, divest the majority position of that asset, take back some capital, and redeploy it in jurisdictions where we believe there is continued upside in terms of geological discoveries. It's really important to be able, as, as a exploration-focused company, which is where we are today, to go into a mineral belt that's proven, has existing mines, infrastructure, uh, an understanding by the government in terms of what mining means to those areas, and still have uh, potential for significant discoveries. So um, essentially where we are, we're in two mineral belts. Uh, we are in the Tethian Belt in Serbia, and we are in the Mesocentral Belt in Mexico. And I'll run through why we are in those areas. The Tethian Belt is probably one of the best known uh, mineral belts in the world in terms of its uh, mineral wealth and uh, the, the many mines that are currently in production and have been in production there. And of that belt, the area which has had the least amount of uh, exploration is really the area which is southeastern Europe. And obvious, that's for obvious reasons. It was in the communist bloc for a long time. As we all know, the communist system has a great education system, and so you've got some very talented people who did great geological interpretation and work, but was really never taken to the next level of actually creating a lot of mining opportunities. So when that region opened up to foreign investment, which I would say is really the early 2000s, um, that has been a place where a lot of foreign investment has looked at and really waited for the right opportunity to get into that region. And we as a company, one of the key uh, factors for us was the blanketing of the legal system of the European Union over those countries. As you know, and as you've probably read in a lot of um, trade journals and, and a lot of the papers, one of the biggest risks for exploration going forward over the next decade is going to be sovereign and political risk. So as a company, you need to ensure, uh, particularly for risk, uh, you are in a, in a jurisdiction where there is secure tenure and there is an environment in the government to allow the, the life cycle of a resource to go from exploration into development. So Serbia, we think, was a great starting point for southeastern Europe. Um, Serbia has, been a, has a, been a candidate of the EU as of March 2012. Their mining law is updated as of November 2011. They have a flat 15% corporate tax rate and an NSR of, of about 5%. But more importantly, it's a very well-known mining jurisdiction as an endpoint. And that's because on the eastern flank of, that, uh, of the country here, uh, which you see on the map, is the Timok complex. And the Timok complex has been in, um, in production, essentially, with the Boer mine for over 15 years and has been mined since the Roman times. And a lot of people ask, you know, what is it like to be in Eastern Europe, and particularly in Serbia, to do business? And first of all, very easy to set up corporately, uh, highly educated workforce. You have a community which is very similar to, Sur to Sudbury or Timmins, where you go and there are generations of families who have made a living off of these mines. So very receptive to what exploration means. 
So what we've done is we've gone in and we've built a land position around that existing operation. We're directly uh, west and east of the Boer mine, uh, which is the Boer Skoezero and the Topla properties. And as a result of the uh, great discovery also just immediately south of us from Reservoir and Freeport, we've picked up the land position that is south of the Borsko Ezero property, which is these four licenses at the bottom, which we received in November. So essentially what we've done in is we've identified uh, a jurisdiction that is safe and great for, uh, from a political point of view, is great from a geological prospectivity point of view in order to find significant discoveries uh, with the bore mine there, and we've surrounded that area with a land package. And we have essentially been proven that model with uh, Reservoir's recent uh, discovery, which is just announced in September of last year of 160 meters of 10.16% copper equivalent which justifies the geological model in that area, which is essentially this. You've got uh, an existing operation on top of a porphyry and epithermal system, one of the few places in the world where you actually get telescoped epithermal high-grade mineralization on top of an, a porphyry-style ore body. That's the best kind of system to have in the world because those types of systems last for probably 50-plus you know, years of production. So we know from the geological drilling and the existing operation that the system dips towards the, the west, and that's what you see in the, in the light green color, with the, and the bright red kind of blobs are the epithermal associated uh, systems, and the pink is the porphyry system. And so basically what we've done is we've tagged the land directly to the west that we know that that stratigraphy is, is inclined into. What we've done, because these licenses were picked up in, uh, in the middle of this year and, and the southern licenses were picked up in November and December, we've completed our geophysics. That's the first place where you start, particularly when you're undercover. And we've seen already eight targets, uh, geophysical anomalies, that coincide with not only our own AMC survey, but also the uh, regional gravity and, uh, and um, mag survey. And what's also important here is you see these liniment lines, which are <clears throat> our interpretation of, of the main trends, and those are directly coincident with where the drilling is currently being done with Freeport and Reservoir. So what we've created in, in the company is a very attractive land package that has not been explored before in a proven mineral belt, which is not only proven with the current existing operation of the Bohr mine, but also has a new discovery by Freeport of a substantial hole, which I think in the industry, if you talk to anyone with a technical background, uh, will assure you that that's probably one of the most significant discoveries we've had in the world in terms of a copper drill hole. Where we are in terms of Mexico is a similar style strategy. It's, we're really looking at porphyry style systems again. Mexico is known historically for small, smaller type, uh, style vein mineralization, primarily um, mixed in with silver and gold. We think there is still significant opportunity for porphyry discoveries, and we've amassed the land package. Uh, again, in that belt where we've seen, you know, for example, on the southern end of the belt, you see the Penasquito mine, which is a hybrid porphyry style system, and the Cardero discovery on the northern end of that belt. And of course, you move northern, northward up into Arizona, and that's porphyry country. I'm gonna just kind of summarize where we are as a company. We, we've got a tremendous land package and an opportunity in Serbia. Uh, it took a great deal of time to put the land package together. We've amassed that in 2012, and in 2013, essentially, we're going to be drilling those targets. Uh, we've got about 17.5 million in cash, which is about 40 cents of value, but we're trading at about 25 cents per share. And the reason is because this is a new land package. We're in a jurisdiction that not a lot of people have heard about, but it doesn't mean that there's no value there. And really what the market wants to see is a resource created. So in terms of our budget, we're going to be spending about a million and a half in Serbia, just under a million in Mexico, and corporate overhead is about a million. So even at the end of 2013, will still be at the same value price of where we are trading today. And if we make that significant discovery, then there's huge upside available for our shareholders. So that, that's kind of really the value proposition. For those who are, 
who are looking for a current discovery, yes, you know, there's other companies like Reservoir, but they're already trading at $3, where we're at 25 cents. We're right in the same geological belt. We're four kilometers away, and we're going to be drilling this year, and we have enough money to be around for at least the next three, four years. And the fact that we've been here for a decade and only had to finance twice and still have $17.5 million in cash, I think you understand that we know how to spend our money and we know how to find good deposits. So with that, I will leave it to the next speaker. Thank you.